just as information. Pastor Danny, I love him to death, but he really knows how to make me nervous. <clears throat> and um, so to, to fulfill or at least uh, play into what Pastor Danny said, um, I'm going to give you just some numbers so you can check the box that yes, um, if, you are, if you're looking for statistics, uh, that uh, I went through the biblical statistics. Okay, so we're going to talk about, uh, and if you don't know, uh, I, um, one of my pastimes is archery, okay? Got into it about uh, probably 15 years ago in uh, competitive archery, hunting, you name it. I, I just enjoy doing it. But um, with that, there's some components uh, in the archery world. We, we know about a bow, we know about arrows, strings, quivers, um, and, the, and to shoot. So I just ran through the Bible last night. I said, well, I better do this. So um, the word bow, B-O-W, is found in three different forms in the King James. Okay, There's bow, right? There's God set in the sky after the flood, rainbow. a bow, a rainbow. But he also, there's, there's, there's a lot of verses that have the word bow as a weapon. And so in the Old Testament, there are 49 times that bow is used as a weapon. In the New Testament, it's one time. Thought it was interesting, one time in the book of Revelation, Revelation 6-2 the white horse, the rider, has a crown and has a bow in his hand. So just information. All right? The word archer is used in the King James. Back in Genesis, it was a man that God loved and had favor on. Can anybody, biblical scholars, think who that was that God called an archer? How about Ishmael? God calls Ishmael in, in Genesis 21 20 an archer. And it says in the same verse that he had favor on Ishmael. And he certainly blessed Ishmael with a lot of children and descendants. We can see that today. Okay, the word arrow. And we're going to kind of focus on the word arrow tonight. But the word arrow is used 14 times. Um, in the, um, and then the word arrows, plural, 39 times with a grand total of 53 times. Okay? Then the quiver is used. And does everybody know what a quiver is? It's what you put your arrows in, right? Okay? And then the word shoot with reference to shooting a bow 17 times. Okay? So there's the biblical statistics behind archery in the Bible. All right? Thank you so much. <laughs> Again, I enjoy archery. And about three years ago, I was in bed, and about four o'clock in the morning, God woke me up and just downloaded what I'm fixing to give you. I grabbed a notepad and started writing. And I wrote and wrote everything that God gave me. So, I'm letting you know right up front, this is not Les Odom, okay? This is what God gave me, okay? Item number one when it comes to archery, we talked about it, is a bow. Now, this dates back almost to the hammer and the wheel. Um, it's a weapon, a tool, but the original item was nothing more than a stick, Okay, but that stick has two parts. It is wood and it has a handle. And God said that handle or that stick equates to Jehovah God. Wrote that down. I said, okay. But there's part two to this stick that you don't see. And that is the tension or the strength 
in the limbs by which it does what it does. And God was very clear. He said, that is the Holy Spirit. The power of God, the dunamos of God. Okay, easy enough. God, the Holy Spirit, right? Part number three, it's a string. Nothing fancy to it. We all know that a threefold cord is not easily broken. broken. Exactly. It's just a string. Nothing fancy about it. But when you add this string to this stick, it becomes a weapon. I said, okay, Lord, what's the string? He said, it's Jesus. I said, okay, I've got it. (laughs) You got God? You got the Holy Spirit that you can't see, the power in the stick, and then you got Jesus. Okay, good enough. Now, what's the rest of the story? What good is a bow and all that power and a string good for if you're not going to use it? Can you... Ta-da! Bingo. Psalm 127, verse 3. Lo, a children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is His reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of the youth. Happy is a man that has a quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. So I did what everybody normally does. I went to commentaries, right? All right, what does this verse say? And what God gave me has nothing to do with Spurgeon and Matthew Henry or any of the other folks. So if you want to go look at that in regards to commentaries, go ahead. He gave me something else. An arrow, modern day arrows, so, so older arrows basically were wooden. It's just a dowel rod if you want to look at it that way. It's just a round piece of wood, okay? Modern arrows in the 20th, 20th century, a lot of aluminum was used for arrows. And then they got real fancy, and they started making them out of carbon. And if you really got some money to spend, you can get a blend of carbon and aluminum. Hmm, Okay. But help me out here. It says arrow on it. Is that an arrow? (laughs) Not yet. Is that an arrow? No, not at all. So I'm going to use a term that I did not come up with. This is what God gave me. Um, The parent archer. And he said, these are the children of the kingdom that he puts in families. So, again, remember there's different materials for an arrow. How many of you have different children? That was easy, wasn't it? The arrow ultimately has a purpose. Okay? One of the things I've told my kids on numerous occasions, I said, you're going to mess up. I understand that. But at the end of the day, I want to see you in heaven. Whenever I'm there and it's your time, I'm going to greet you. So my whole goal was to make sure that they got into heaven. So there's a process. And one of the things that God spoke to me in this download is being a parent, you cannot be passive. A passive parent is not what he's looking for. Okay, so... Whenever God gives you arrows, 
you got to get a hold of God because you know the purpose of the arrows. All right? This isn't kindling. It has a purpose. Now, the purpose, we know, we, it's easy to define. Brother Steve, what did you say we were going to try and do tonight? Hit the target. Hit the target. All right, so what did you learn in second or first grade about colors? Uh, primary colors. Primary colors. And what color is gold? Uh, well, it's uh, gold. Gold, yeah, or it could be yellow, some kind yeah. of yellow. Huh? Uh, and what are the streets in heaven? Color are they? Gold. Hmm. Heaven. That's our goal, right? To make sure that our children hit the target, that they get to heaven. Okay, but there's more to it than that. All right, going back to the arrow. We know we got to get a hold of God. God gave us these arrows for a purpose, and the purpose is to see them go down line and hit the target. The target is heaven, salvation, right? Fair enough. Okay. So step number one in dealing with an arrow is to find its purpose. And I said, okay, Lord, what are you talking about there? And he said, just like there are different arrows in your quiver for different purposes, um, there are, there are, honestly, there are fat arrows. I don't know if you can see this. Eh, you can see it maybe, I hope. That's a big fat arrow. We call them Lincoln Logs. Okay? Purpose. In target archery, if you get really close to the line, it's fat enough that it'll touch the line. And if you're touching the line, you get the extra points. Okay? Real skinny arrows. Like smaller than pencils. Long distance. Less effect by the wind. Then there's the typical medium size arrow, run of the mill generic arrow, which I shoot a lot of. Um, everyday use, either for sport or hunting or for defense. Originally, the arrows were two, twofold defense and hunting. And later on in life, it became more of a sport. We still use it for hunting, but not so much for defense and a sport. And I like to play around with wood arrows and red, white, and blue, and I just felt it looked good. <clears throat> but with the arrows and the purpose comes the point. Brother Steve, what's the point of all of this? It's the front, right? It's the front. Well, guess what? There's different points for different purposes. I don't have a medieval... Bodnik, or Bodkin, excuse me, uh, that was a point that was used to pierce armor. Don't have one, but guess what? The English used it quite well against the French in the Hundred Year War, if you're a history buff. Okay? There is a blunt, okay, and that's a training arrow or a training point. There's what we call a judo point. And no, it's not for karate. I don't know. I, I think it was just a cool term that they came up with. But this is for aerial hunting, like for fowl, pheasant. It's not easy to do, trust me. But that little thing right there, it, it doesn't tear up the meat, but it will certainly bring the, the, animal, or the, the bird to the ground. Then there is the ever-beloved broadhead which the Indians used basically out of flint rock. And it's razor sharp, and it is designed to cut. So looking as the parent, parent archer, you've got to get a hold of God and find out what's the purpose of this arrow. I said, all right, Lord, how do I do that? He took me to uh, Romans 12. Romans 12 talks about the purposes or what is instilled in our life. And I'm just going to remind you, okay? Oop, that's on the other page. Prophecy, ministry, teaching, exhortation, giving, 
ruler, mercy. We have a granddaughter named Emma. And she's two and a half. We can already see what her design is in God's plan. She is mercy. She sits there with her little lollipop that her grandma gave her and shares it with her cousin. And if you sneeze, she says, bless you. And if you stump your toe, she takes care of you. She, it, her design is mercy. And as a parent archer, I have to be cognizant of that and learn that and help develop that. We have a grandson. You probably know who he is. <clears throat> um, I was looking at that list. I said, all right, what is he? And I'm pretty sure he's a ruler. He is a decision maker. Now, he's all over the map, but he is a decision maker. And he makes a decision, and he moves on, and he's five years old. It's not always the right decision, but he has no problem with making a decision. So as a parent archer, we are to be cognizant of what the arrow is that God gave us and to groom it in that direction. Easy enough. Not really. I said, okay, Lord. I started asking questions then. What about the fletchings? You got, actually there's fletchings out there that are smaller than that. I've got some, just didn't put them on, a boat, on an arrow yet. So let's say it's really, really small, medium, and a lot, big. He said, what do fletchings do for an arrow? I said, that's easy, guidance. They help direct the arrow. I've shot arrows without any fletching. It's not a pretty sight. I mean, they go... <laughs> I mean, and you go, ooh, what was that? You know, it's not a pretty sight. Yes, sir. What is a fletching? Okay, old school fletchings were goose feathers. These happen to be turkey feathers that have been dyed. Um, this one is actually a plastic or a, a, a mylar fletching. So it's very durable and can take a lot of pounding. Okay. Uh, but that's what it is. And I said, fletching is guidance. And he said, yep, that's the word of God. And then I had to relate that to my own kids. I said, you know what? I've got one son that needed lots of guidance. He really did. He was just like his father. And I can't imagine how my parents dealt with it. But he needed a lot of guidance. But you know what? I have another son. He is very compliant. And he loves the Word of God. And he loves to follow the Word of God. Guess what? He's like this fletching here. The difference is a lot. And they both had the same training. They both had the same upbringing. But this one here needed a lot. And this one here not so much. The Word of God in their life. Okay. So all of that. And then we come down to the last piece of the puzzle. This part right here that connects to Jesus. Remember the string was Jesus. So we've got an arrow. We figured out what its purpose is. We've, we've disciplined and worked things in their life to make that point everything that it's supposed to be from God's design, God's perspective. We've given them guidance through the Word of God. But guess what? This error is missing one very important piece. That little piece of plastic right there. I said, all right, Lord, what is it? He said, it's salvation. Without salvation, you can't hook this on to Jesus. You can't launch the arrow. You cannot do your job as a parent archer without 
salvation. It's a very small thing, but it's essential. As we call it, the knock. N-O-C-K. It's a knock. Well, there's a knock at the door. And it clips on to the string once it's on the bow. It clips on there. And I, I just felt really bad about stringing a bow in church, having a weapon in church, so I'm just not going to do it. But you would get the idea. There it is right there. It clips on to Jesus for the purpose that it was designed for. Without it, you can't, you can't launch an arrow. You can't, there's, there's nothing to push it because it doesn't hang on to Jesus. Without hanging on to Jesus, without salvation, Okay, so I've done a lot of archery. I enjoy tournaments um, in the woods with 3D animals and stuff like that. And um, it's a lot of fun. And it's reminiscent of, uh, of whenever this, this whole download gave to me. And then not too long ago... The target was down there, and boy, I, I, knew I, I knew I had it. And it flew beautiful, and you know I'm watching it. You remember the prodigal son? Where was the father? Doing what? He was standing at the door watching for his son, right? So whenever this arrow gets launched, I'm watching it. Woo, it looks good. But guess what was there? There was a vine, a briar. We call it a cat's claw or a hold up or a comeback. And it's usually associated with blood on your arm. <laughs> but guess what? I hit the vine and the arrow did a nosedive to the right. Do I call it done? done. I, I don't get the points. I missed the target. I'm done, right? No. You go looking for that arrow. And sometimes it's buried under the leaves and under the wood and under the stick. And you get down on your knees and you start looking for that arrow. And guess what? I usually find it because I've spent money on these things. Lots of money. And I'm just not letting it go like that. So I find that arrow, and guess what? It's all dirty and mangled and bruised and fletching's all messed up. Guess what? I clean it up. I get all of the dirt off. Make it an arrow again. And shoot it again for the target. We don't ever give up on our children. Never give up. What did I say a while ago? Parenting is not passive. All of my kids are grown. My dad passed away in 2003. Up until the day he died, I was asking him questions. Dad, what about this? Dad, what do you think about that? And he would always pour out his heart to me. So in summary, the arrow has a purpose. Never stop teaching. It takes energy, it takes effort from the parent archer to launch that arrow. It's not easy. It's not cheap. You must have a knock. What did I do with that knock? <laughs> there it is. You must have a knock. And you got to watch it fly to see what God's going to do. I was talking to my wife last night and just kind of going through this. And, and again, that total download was from God. It wasn't anything I came up with. It was God at 4 o'clock in the morning. And I started writing. I was talking to Anne Marie last night, just kind of going through this. And I said, you know what, baby? My parents set me on a path, and I can remember the day. 
It was Christmas, eighth grade. In eighth grade, I don't know if you remember Brownsville Middle School, we had shop class. Dad wanted me to take shop class because I was tearing up his tools and he wanted me to learn how to take care of tools, right? <laughs> but in shop class, the first part was drafting. And then the second part, you know, we, they got, we had to play with a little bit of tools. But I really took hold of that first part. And my parents recognized that in my life, in their son. And that Christmas, December 25th, I don't remember what year, but 8th grade, I got a drafting table. And my dad and I, we put that thing together. You know what I've been doing for the last hmm, 45 years? Pretty much. I'm a surveyor. One thing surveyors do is they draw up things. I've done survey. As a matter of fact, I did a survey for a, 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 a cemetery here recently, and I had to draw it all up. That was different. Never did anything like that before. I've done um, um, parts that people wanted to try to get patent, and I can trace it all the way back to eighth grade and my parents taking an interest in their son and saying, he is going to be in this direction. And they spurred that in eighth grade. You can't be passive. Now, I would say just looking at this group here, there's maybe one parent um, who's still got some uh, in that realm. And most of us are grandparents now. All right? But again, you never stop teaching. And you look for the purpose that God has designed that arrow for. And you make things hone in that direction. That's what God gave me. Brother? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Les. Can we give Les a hand? That was awesome. I learned a lot tonight. And uh, I could probably listen to that a couple times. It's, uh, I wish we had uh, somebody here to record that. Les, you're going to have to do that again, really. I mean, uh, you. oh, you got it recorded? Awesome. The, yeah, the audio, yeah, that would be, but just to even see his illustrations, too. That was, um, I would say that was based on what God gave him. That was probably almost kind of like a prophetic teaching. It was beautiful. And... Uh, you know, after raising my children and everything, a lot of the illustrations that he was giving, I could see that. I could see that with my own children. Um, what was what was this part right here? This again? The fletching. Yeah, there was a, you know, I, I definitely had, you know, one time a, a young couple came up to me and Marilyn. We were at a conference, and they said, we just love your daughter, Stephanie. You know, how did you all raise her? And I said, well, I... I never spanked her. I think her mother spanked her one time. And they said, well, you have two older sons, don't you? How did you raise them? Oh, well. Well, you, you know, we, we had to deal with them like the Russian army with force. <laughs> they were strong-willed. <laughs> but anyhow, um, with regards to what Les is saying, it's, it's beautiful. But even my son called me last year, and he said to me, you know, he's right in the middle of, of what Les was giving an illustration about. And he said to me, he said, Dad, I thank God for you, and I thank God for you disciplining me. He said, because I, I get it now. I get it. And so, you know, and spending time with our children and really knowing the difference you know, some children we have like this, and some children are maybe like like this little guy right here, like this right here. That was my daughter, and uh, she's that way today. She's just easy, but she's uh, like her mother. She's got radar, and she senses and understands what's God. But the greatest thing we can do is to know our children because we really, really, really can know how to shoot the arrow, to hit the target. So, Les, I really, I really, really enjoyed that. And uh, whoever didn't see that, they missed out. So, um, Father, I just want to thank you for this message. 
Lord, Les did accomplish what he wanted tonight. And uh, whether he was he was nervous, I didn't I didn't see that. I think he was nervous because he wanted to deliver what you gave to him. And so, Father, we thank God for Les and what he means to this body of believers. And, Father, I think he has a message that needs to be heard by many others because, boy, I'll tell you what, from a parent, parent's perspective, this is a powerful message, and it helps people. It's a practical illustration of God's Word as an archer, he understands all the components of that, and God showed him how to connect that together to the Word of God to put another tool in our toolbox to help us to understand, even for our grandchildren, this is an important message. So, Father, we just bless Les and Anne-Marie and their whole family, and we thank you for them right now. In Jesus' name, amen. That's it. Unless somebody has something else, somebody else has something they would like to. Any comments about this this message? I really wanted to see him shoot the apple. <laughs> <laughs> shoot the apple off my head. I know he's a good shot. <laughs> he says no. <laughs> yeah, now he would shoot it off Danny's head. <laughs> Might be blinded by the light. <laughs> uh, Linda, come up for a minute. I want you, I just, I, Linda has such an innate ability to, to, um, to sense about what God's saying through this message, and I just wanted to hear what Linda had to say, what her perspective was, what she gleaned off of it. Yeah, put her on the spot. No, I think one of the most important things to me um, that Les said was, first of all, you never give up on your children. Um, I know when a couple of my grandchildren were in the womb, the Lord spoke to me uh, what their name meant before I even knew their name. So God's a generational God, but he said, you know, raise up your children in the admonition of the Lord, like arrows, you know, in our hands. That's a responsibility, and, and I think there's an accountability we're going to be accountable, even as grandparents, to speak into the lives of our children and to pass on um, that spiritual gift and blessing. You know, we, we bless our children, and there's crucial times in their lives that we need to be alert to speak that into their lives and to help nurture them. And there's a releasing. I was thinking when he shot that arrow, there's also a releasing, and that's not easy for us as parents to let go sometimes and trust God. There's a trust in God, too. So I was really blessed. Thank you, Les, for sharing. That was awesome. Thank you, Linda, for that perspective. Patrick? the arrow yeah that's what I was thinking I was just kind of taking your your picture there and next step okay the salvation goes with the uh, with the arrow and then Steve's telling me that he's not just got an interest No, this 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 guy is very good at what he does. I mean, so this he's he's done very well in competition. And maybe you can have a private conversation with him so about that. John, did you have anything? We've got a couple minutes here and we're gonna conclude our service. So I'll be real quick. I, I wanted to um Say, first of all, I think I've seen you surveying before. So <laughs> I don't know how long ago that was, but I, I thought I, you looked familiar to me. But anyway, uh, great lesson. I want to say probably six months ago, the Lord uh, shared with me, uh, Minister Steve, that he is 
raising up the next generation of children. It, and it was so profound to me. And the timeliness of this message, it's so right on point um, that I thought I'd share that. It's just, it, it, and it needs to be told again. It really does. No, 